On December 31st of 2020, I wrote in my journal, my goal for next year is to fall in love with this life again. I guess that means that I was out of love with life. I was left exhausted, empty, unsatisfied, burned out. Burned out academically, mentally, physically, everything. Not only were we and still are in the middle of a pandemic, but half a year consumed by a non-stop cycle of adapting to online classes, new expectations, loneliness, fear of missing out, and all the other things you normally experience starting university, except in isolation, rolled by. How does burnout happen? For me, it was the expectation. The expectation and then the reality. I was disappointed in myself, never feeling like enough, and then ultimately feeling hopeless when the efforts I put in to get closer to my expectations didn't measure up. I told myself, if I stay up all night for this test, put in all my hours in quarantine, because what better things did I have to do into studying, building my resume, being my best self? Then, and only then, would I be satisfied and accept myself, love myself, be happy with myself. I had incessant expectations and demands for myself as a freshman at this glittering thing we call university. And I also felt overwhelmed by the novel knowledge I was being given. Establish a LinkedIn resume, elevator pitch, get an internship, but also finally join the interest club that will shape my growth for the next four pivotal years of my personal development and career development. Don't get me wrong, it wasn't bad learning all of this, but I quickly allowed myself to feel inadequate. Like I had so much catching up to do and that the chase to be enough would never end. So I set out, like many others I'm sure, to accomplish a grand resolution. Develop a deep gratification, satisfaction, and enjoyment of life again. Because I didn't seem to be capable of that anymore. I wanted to be able to stop and smell the roses again, feel excited, curious, connected to the present rather than anxiously planning an uncertain future. I did find that sense of contentment, but definitely not in the way that I had predicted, actually probably in the most roundabout way, and that's what I wanted to reflect on this year which is the year that I found out more than ever how beautifully, frustratingly human I am. January 1st, 2021. Happy New Year's. Simple, optimistic. And then I inevitably took a deep dive into school again. Code, code, code. I don't want to. I can't. Why? February, I stopped going to most of my classes. My anxiety reaches a peak and it's hard to breathe. March, I love learning. I hate learning. April, I've failed. I've failed tests, assignments, routine, structure, focus, health. I've failed myself. May, what's the worst that could happen? Control. I try to predict every worst case scenario and prepare for a moment that is equally as likely to happen as the best case scenario and end up suffering twice. June, a change of pace. Something, anything. July and August, I feel peace for the first time. A change arrives and I realize that everything passes, the good and the bad. September, school in full swing this time. In person, the real, official college experience. I feel lonely. October, I'm a computer science major that, let's just say, is still really brushing up on her coding skills. November, expectations, expectations from myself, from others, but mostly for myself. December, I am exhausted. 2021 was hard. Maybe the hardest year of my life. Or maybe that's because it just happened. I cried, messed up, got brutally sick three times in one semester, frustrated, and did more very human things. A lot sucked, but it wouldn't be fair of me to say that every moment of 2021 was unbearable. (laughs) 
that I hated every oh second God. of it because that's not true. Get it later. Girl, just oh, that's not even cheese though. <laughs> Okay, I'm, okay I'm sorry. You're literally, this is so embarrassing. Exactly like riding a roller coaster you've never ridden before, it's unpredictable. One moment it's low, the next it's rising, but you don't know if it's a drop next or if it's a steady chug, fast in intervals, the kind that jerks your whole body. You don't know if it's curvy, loopy, backwards, anything. It's tough to say. You might be on a high out of your mind one moment for the next, wishing for another high or wanting the last high back. It's funny. But if this year has taught me anything, it's that everything happens for a reason and that what's meant to be will be. Both the high and low were very much meant to be, and for every low, there was a high. In January, I started therapy. I learned about self-talk. I learned that the way that I talk to myself is just as important as the way I talk to others. February, I'm more introverted than I thought. March, friends. Mm, so cute. Anime check with bestie. First anime. Comfort anime. Bye, Sarah! Sit this down. Oh my god! Ha 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 ha. April, failure is not the end of the world. Whatever it is that you perceive as a failure, you will have more chances. I can promise that. May, slow down, breathe, and just observe. I took a mindfulness class and was introduced to different meditation practices and the researched benefits of practicing mindfulness. It brings me peace and separates me from the non-stop chatter in my brain, the kind that would ruin my day or stop me from putting myself out there. June, my best is and will always be enough. And also the semester ended, my friends and I were all vaccinated, which means that I got to eat with them again. July, I celebrated the 4th of July and my birthday. Started working at the best boba shop with the best people, Ching Fu Tong, and felt a lot of love. August, I'm really cool. And that's all I have to say. September, I choose my time. College is potentially a lot of FOMO and peer pressure, but there's a lot of power in being able to choose your experiences and shape the experience that you want and are paying for it. October, I get to try a lot of new things, being alone, being one of them. I learned how to enjoy and romanticize my time alone. November, boundaries. My happiness comes before anyone else's and the only person I need to show up as is myself. December, I am human. I'm so human that I need a break. I'm so human that I make mistakes. So human that I'm nothing without my health. And so human that I even forget that I'm human. you're human and we all deserve love sometimes that's being patient and doing the bare minimum until you slowly start feeling whole again and gradually life will feel the same being human is no weakness it's the fact that we are creatures of habit creatures of error creatures of emotion and creatures of community that make this entire experience so special so congrats you are human you and I get to give and receive empathy and respect and love, and sometimes we get to be more human than we want to be. But that's reassurance that you and I are working, that we're not broken and will never be broken so long as we're here. What is here? Here is realizing that next year, next month, even the next moment may or may not be better than the last. So here is now. I'm glad you're here with me now.